y'all, and welcome back to my little corner of the internet. My name is Lilith, and for today's video, we're going to be reading two spooky stories from our true scary stories. Before we jump into today's video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell so you never miss a video, and hit the like button on this video. So without further ado, we'll jump right into it. The first story you'll be hearing is called Creatures Hiding from Humanity, performed by a good friend of mine, Rhett. A couple of months ago, my friend and I decided that we would like to go down to this place called Black Canyon. It's a nice rural spot. Not too many people go there, but the main attraction is the lake and the small cliffs that you can jump off of. It's always been better to go later in the day so the sun isn't beating on you the whole time, so my friend and I decided it would be wise to get there around 6pm. It was honestly like any other kind of day, nothing out of the ordinary. There were people hanging out in this middle of nowhere place and we were all having a good time. I sent some off the cliff, but then I forgot about the natural water slide that's about a three to five minute walk away from the lake. I asked the people to watch over our stuff, got my friend, and decided to go check it out since I haven't gone down in a long while. It took us about five minutes to get there since my friend is very cautious, and looking at it now, if they hadn't been, I might have had a bad run-in with whatever the hell we came into contact with. Right as we were about to get to the water slide, I heard this indescribable noise. The closest thing to it was like a demonic generator going off. It was certainly nothing I had ever heard before, in all honesty. I didn't believe what I was hearing at first, so I quickly turned to my friend and asked, Hey dude, did you hear the same thing I just did? My friend turned and looked a little frightened and said, Yeah. Neither of us could determine what it was but that wasn't going to stop me from going down this slide. Yes, that was a terrible decision. I started to walk on down to the natural water slide, leaving my friend behind, when I swear I saw a round head and a lanky arm fly behind a rock I was about to pass by. I froze at first, but I figured that my eyes were playing tricks on me. People see things that aren't there all the time, right? Anyway, I only took one step forward before I heard the same noise as before, only much louder. The same demonic-like generator noise boomed from out behind the rock that I saw something dart behind. After that, I turned tail and ran as fast as I could back to my friend. I asked him again in a frightened tone, practically yelling, Did you hear that? My friend looked as on edge as I was and just responded with a simple, Yes. After hearing my friend's answer, we ran as fast as we could back to the lake. When we came back, out of breath, the people asked us what was wrong. I told them what my friend and I had encountered, and they looked extremely surprised. A man then spoke up and told me that I wasn't the only one with this sort of run-in. He told me that many people have told him that they have heard strange noises over by the waterfall. People believed it to be a skinwalker or a wendigo. After hearing that, I've never gone back to that waterfall since. Something lingers there, and I really don't want to find out what. You'll never know what you'll find out in the wilderness. Our second spooky story is called Trick or Treaters by Swoon Walruses 9935. Again, performed by Rhett. Since I was seven years old, Halloween has been my favorite holiday. While most of my family was already excited about what Christmas decorations to put up, I stayed busy trying to throw on my costume so that I could run through my neighborhood with a stained pillowcase in hand. October 31st, 2010 changed my Halloween plans for the rest of my childhood and most of my young adult life. I was ten years old at the time. We had concluded the Halloween party we threw for close friends and neighbors that year. Even as a kid, I knew that the air was thick with the smell of beer, hard liquor, and whatever other adult treat people brew up for liquor treating. The Lipsons were still at the house. 
They were my parents' closest friends, so they stayed long after everyone else drunkenly waddled through the front door with their sober-enough-to-drive spouses and sugar-crash children. To put up with the obnoxious and loud party for two families, I sat in the music room by myself and counted my candy earnings for the night. Around twelve rappers into counting, I hear a knock on the front door. I found this odd because we turned the front porch light off once most of the party left. I figured maybe it was either some kid who was late trick-or-treating, a greedy kid trying to get some extra candy, or maybe even a party guest who forgot something. Looking back, I should have let my parents, or even one of the Lipsons, open the door, but I was a kid, and it was the one night a year where strangers knocking on your door all night is normal. That was the other thing. They knocked. All night, there have been kids ranging from my age to young adults. Not one of them knocked on my door. Rather, they just rang the doorbell. When I stood up, I grabbed the mask I had worn all night. I didn't put it all the way on, though. It smelled like sweat, spit, and warm breath. I went to open the front door, my mask resting on top of my head, and a half-empty bowl of candy the neighborhood kids had picked apart like sugar vultures all night balanced in one hand. Before I could get to the door, the three knocks that scared me enough the first time repeated. It made me jump so hard that my mask fell off my head, and I had to stabilize the candy bowl with my other hand. The adult conversation happening in the other room had silence to my ears. All I could focus on was what was on the other side of my door. Finally, I swallowed my fear and crept the door open. In front of me, I could see a man, not a kid. I'm not entirely sure if it was a teenager. He wore a glossy blue skull mask with a black robe covering the rest of his body. I would have held the candy bucket out for him, but he was in the middle of my lawn. How could he have knocked on my door? I thought to myself. All I hear are the crickets screaming in the dark bushes, and the man in the mask breathing slowly. Um, do you want some candy? I nervously mutter out. From the middle of my lawn, I see the man in the mask tilt his head slowly, and his breathing stops. I'm not sure how long we stood there. Me at the doorway and him dead still in the darkness. I was frozen in fear. I waited for him to move, for him to breathe again, or at least just walk away. I go to turn on my front porch light to get a better look at him. I think that maybe if I can see more, I'll be able to tell that it's just one of my friend's brothers trying to scare me. I lean back into the house and flip the light switch upwards. Before I can look back into my yard to check if the man in the mask is someone I know, I hear him breathing again. It's different, though. He's excited. I look out and I see him walking towards my house with head still tilted. Does he want the candy in my hand? Before I can answer that question, I see a shadow out of the corner of my eye. My head dashes to the left and I see another man in a mask walking to me from the side of the house. I look back at the man in my yard. He's on my walkway, in front of my house, and walking with more haste. It seems as if he knows he doesn't have much time to get to me, so he knew he needed to speed up. If this was the first time I was put into a situation in which I had to think on the fly. But even with my mind screaming at me to close the door, my body stood stiff in fear. I assumed it was some stupid prank, but by the time the men in the masks got to my door, I slammed it shut and locked them out. I stood on the other side of the door with my back pressed firmly against it as if my petite 70 pound body would do anything against two grown men. On either side of my front door there were skinny windows. I peeked out to see what they were planning on doing, but there was no one there. Not so much as a shadow running away from my house. After that, I didn't enjoy trick or treating too much until I matured and started enjoying scary movies more than most people should. That being said, I still loved Halloween more than any holiday, but I spent it trying to throw parties in my young adulthood or watching a scary movie with my older sister. I've done that every year for the last decade. I recently turned 20 back in September of 2020, but I fear that this year is going to be different. 
Back in July of this year, a double homicide occurred in my own town. A man was shot twice over by the town cemetery, and the suspect was never caught, but he wore a mask. Three months after it happened, the start of October, I was home alone at night while my parents were out on a date. I had just bought myself some guitar wall hangers and hung them up earlier that day, so I was feeling good. I was eating leftovers for dinners downstairs around 9 p.m., and my quaint little dinner for one was interrupted by a loud bang followed by the sound of wood bouncing on a hard floor. I immediately assumed the guitar hangers on my wall collapsed and my acoustic guitar shattered, so I ran to the front of my house where the music room is. Once I turn the corner, I see something far more upsetting to me than the shrapnel of my acoustic guitar. My front door was wide open. The wood I heard was part of the door frame that was ripped off when the door was kicked in. I'm 20 years old, and at this point in my life, I had gone through many situations in which I had to be the brave one. I went to go get my Louisville slugger bat, and then carefully crept up to my front door. I saw no one. Again. The only evidence that I had that anyone was by my house was a shoe print in the center of my door. Reluctantly, I stepped outside to look for more evidence on what happened. Then, I saw something in my yard. It's so dark outside, I can't even make it out. I walk over to it to see what I lost in the grass earlier today because I assumed that's what it was. After picking it up, I dropped it and sprinted back into my house and called the police. I went into my room and locked the door because my front door wouldn't even close anymore. I waited in the corner of my room. A 20-year-old man clutching onto a baseball bat and frozen in fear again until the red and blue light shined through my window. The police came in and questioned me about what happened. I gave them every answer I could about everything except for one small detail I didn't know. Who does this mask belong to, son? Halloween is coming up, and I don't know what my plans are this year. I do know one thing for sure, though. I am not answering the door this time. Did anyone lose a mask? Don't forget to check who's outside your front door, and don't open the door too late. Thank you guys so much for listening to today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. It was nice to do something a little bit different and a little bit spooky for Halloween. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Like this video if you liked it. Leave a comment. Send it to a friend to scare them tonight. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell so you never miss a video from me. Thanks again to Rhett for reading these stories for us today. I'll see you guys next week when we start jumping into Thanksgiving prep. Bye, y'all.